Go back to the 12th of January 2022. I'll be with a tour guide soon and John Wesley attended school here. When the school moved to Gold Elming in 1872, and you can give them this card and you'll get 15% off. I thought it looks really cool. I think this looks prettier. On top of the hill above the river fleet. The museum is actually free. Good morning everyone, I have arrived at Barbican Station and today I'm gonna go to the Charter House which is a 3 minute walk from here That is the Charter House Just finished flying my drone here and I saw the whole of the Charter House so I'll insert that clip now So the Charter House was a historic complex of buildings in Smithfield, London Dating back to the 14th century and home to the famous almhouse. Set in the heart of Clerkenwell, the Charter House has been living the nation's history since 1348. Initially a black death burial ground, the site became home to the largest Carthusian monastery in the world until it was brutally dissolved in 1537 when 60 monks became proto-martyrs of the Reformation. A Grand Tudor mansion replaced the monastery. Elizabeth I spent the first days of her reign at the Charter House and James I of England created 143 Barons in the Great Chamber prior to the coronation. In 1611, Thomas Sutton acquired the mansion and site to house to his new charity, an almshouse and school. The school separated and moved out of London in 1872, but the almshouse thrives to this day. Tudor Jacobin and later architecture that makes the site so fascinating. Wellington, Gladstone, and Cromwell have all been governors. The Charter House appears in the writings of Daniel Defoe, Charles Dickens, and William Makepeace Thackeray. Indeed, Thackeray, Robert Baden Powell and John Wesley attended school here. When the school moved to God Elming in 1872, the brothers remained at the Charter House in Clerkenwell. Today, the Charter House is home to a community of brothers who benefit from the charity established by Thomas Sutton. The monastery was actually closed in 1537 in the dissolution of the monasteries during the English Reformation. As it resisted dissolution, the monastery was treated harshly. The prior, John Halton, was hanged, drawn, and quartered at Tyburn, and ten monks were taken to the nearby Newgate Prison. Nine of these men starved to death, and the tenth was executed three years later at Tower Hill. They constitute the group known as the Carthusian Martyrs of London. For several years after the dissolution of the Priory, members of the Bassano family of instrument makers were amongst the tenants of the former monks' cells. Whilst Henry VII stored hunting equipment in the church. In 1545, the entire site was bought by Sir Edward, who transformed the complex into a luxurious mansion house. North demolished the church and built the Great Hall and adjoining Great Chamber. In 1558, during North's occupancy, Queen Elizabeth I used the house during the 
preparations for her coronation. Following North's death, the property was purchased by Thomas Howard, 4th Duke of Norfolk, who renamed it Howard House. In 1517, following the imprisonment in the Tower of London for scheming to marry Queen of Scots, Norfolk was placed under house arrest at the Charter House. He occupied his time by embellishing the house and built a long terrace in the garden. And I also want to take a photo of the entrance of the Charter House. The time now is 10.48 a.m. And this place actually opens at 10.30 a.m. And there are two people drawing the house, I guess, over here, which is pretty cool. This is the chapel court and it was here 600 years ago and it was Charter House's large priory church. So, yeah. I will be with a tour guide soon. It actually starts at 11. How did they get their clothes? Well, there were 40 lay brothers, priests, other priests who are not monks, who carry out all the practical stuff, family and gossiping. But it would have been plastered and decorated at that time. Most of the cloisters were demolished, but they used the old stones there. You can see a porch on your left-hand side in front of you with the coat of arms, the royal coat of arms, and if you look at on coat of arms, you'll know that is of Charles. So, those are made of Tudor brick walls, and also the monastery that you saw just now was made of Tudor brick walls. So we're going to go back by the route that we take. Just ask the tour guide what this room is used for and she said it's the activities room but in the tour she didn't really introduce this room. So this is the Tudor chamber one. and so it is the only one remaining in the room. He was instrumental as a go-between to get Charles II reinstated as the king. Um, and you can see by his sober dress, he doesn't uh, suffer fools gladly. Very, very sober life. The site of the original chapel. In fact, it turns out to have been the chapter house. How do we know this? Post-war, Celian Paget, a lad to imagine them out there amongst the rubble, sorting it out, when one of them there is a little museum here and the tour just finished. It was a uh, one hour tour. Oh, it's not that little. I feel like knowing me, I'm probably gonna spend one hour here. So I'll let you know if I read anything interesting. And um, this actually is quite interesting. It says, from 1890 to 2000, if we knew a resident, then you're able to come in. If not, you're not able to come in. So this charter house was actually opened in 2017 for the public. So there's actually a library that uses this Windsor chair. And this is for the brothers. So this is a mold of John Luke's name. And um, modding is actually a term used at Charterhouse School, and known for carving your name onto a desk. So Thomas Sutton brought the Charterhouse in 1611 as a home for his almshouse. 
um, oh, he actually worked as a secretary to several noble families, including the Dudleys and Howards. This is the day in the life of a monk, and I learned that they don't actually have breakfast. The first meal of the day is midday, and they normally have vegetable soup poured over a slice of bread. So this is an impression of the monastery seal and the two figures inside this seal is actually Virgin Mary and Angel Gabriel and I have nearly finished the exhibition and I think it's one now so my um prediction was kind of correct. I'm probably gonna spend one hour here. This is the chapel and it is still used today. Um, it, there are morning prayers two times a day and musicians would come in here for rehearsals. I just finished up here. I think I spent around three hours here and I just asked the reception if they recommend any restaurants and they actually gave me a card. I'll show you later. So it's in a restaurant called Nuyon and you can give them this card and you'll get 15% off and it's a two minute walk from here. This is the restaurant. It's now 1.39 p.m. I ordered this green smoothie and this chicken satay and with my coupon it came together as £8.46. I've now finished my lunch and it is now 2.16 p.m. and I decided to uh, discover what's around Farringdon and I saw this beautiful star here so I wanted to take a photo with it. I'm looking for the Hayton Garden and I walked past this Christmas box kind of thing. I thought it looked really cool so I want to take a photo of here with it. I'm at the end of St. Cross Street now and I realized there is no garden here. I got fooled by the name again. But I saw a church here. Um, so I'm now going to look for more things to do around Farrington just because I want to know this area better. So I couldn't find the church I was always really looking for. But I found this St. Andrew Holborn Church this small so I think I'm gonna go to the next destination. There's also a city temple church over here. I think this looks prettier. I'm gonna take a photo here. As I was leaving the city temple I saw that the garden for St. Andrew Holborn was open so I decided to come in and try and find my church. In this clip I will tell you about the history of this church. Roman pottery was found on the site during 2001 in the crypt. However, the first written record of the church itself is stated as 951 in a charter of Westminster Abbey, referring to it as the Old Wooden Church, on top of the hill above the River Fleet. The charter's authenticity has been called into question because the date is not within the reign of the King Edgar of England, who is granting it. It may be that this is simply a scribal error and that the date should be 959. A master Gladwin held it after the Norman conquest and he assigned it to St. Paul's Cathedral, but with the proviso that the advocacy be granted at 12 pence a year to the Cluniac orders. St. Xavier's foundation of what was become Vermontsley Abbey. This assignment dates between 1086 and 1089. In about 1200 year, a date was witnessed by James the Parson, Roger, his chaplain, Andrew, the deacon, and also Alexander, his clerk. 
In 1218, one Simon de Gardino bequeathed funds towards the building of the belfry. It is assumed this would be stone and that there were due to be bells to be cast for it. In the early Middle Ages, the church is referred to as St. Andrew, Holborn, and Street, and later simply as St. Andrew de Holborn. In 1348, John Tanth, a local armorer, left a considerable estate towards the support of the fabric forever, a legacy which survived the English Reformation. It was invested carefully through the centuries and still provides for the church's current upkeep. I actually arrived at the letter lane market and it actually closes at full, so I think that's why most of the stalls are closed. It's the Museum of the Order of St. John. It actually says on Google Maps that it's closed today, but because this wasn't on my main list of things to do, I didn't check the opening times, I just checked the Charterhouse opening times and actually there were two staffs here and I asked them a bit about the museum and they said basically it's for the monk that his name was St. John basically and she told me that the museum is actually free um, but if you want a guided tour you have to pay for the guided tour so that's 12 pounds, but if you don't want it at all, then it's just like free. So if you're on a budget, maybe you don't have to go to the charter house. You can just go to this instead. And I'm gonna take a photo here, and then I think I have half an hour more until the sun sets. I think this is Smithfield's market, because I remember looking for it online, and, and it looks like this. So I'm gonna try and take a photo here. I think this is St. Bartholomew. New the great, but I don't think this is a really nice photo to have top place. So I think I have 10 minutes left until the sky gets dark. So I'm gonna see if there's anything else to do, and if not, then I'm gonna head back. So I'm now gonna head back to Barbican Tube Station because there's nothing else to do, and there's four minutes till sunset. So if you enjoyed this vlog, don't forget to subscribe, like. Comment down below to let me know if you went to any of these places and share with your friends and I'll see you all with another traveling vlog or music related video.